What's going on, everyone? Bishar Kati here with BJK University. Uh, we have Sam Newman, uh, who's been a student with us here at BJK University for a few months. Uh, he's agreed to come today, do an interview, and share with you guys uh, his journey so far, not just as a member of BJK University, but as a member um, of the Amazon platform, as an Amazon seller. So got a list of questions here we're going to ask him uh, about his uh, successes, his failures, you know, uh, share with us some of the things that has worked for him, uh, things that didn't work so much. I know he's got a lot of that. Uh, but uh, Sam, thank you very Hello. much for being here, man. How are you? Hey, I'm well. I'm really well. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, first question that I want to start is why Amazon? And it's such a good question because I wanted to actually I did open a Shopify store first. Mm. And so there was this weird underlying thing. Okay, e-commerce is the way, but what platform? Um, I had worked for a previous employer and they used Shopify very successfully. Um, but they also, uh, they had an enormous customer service team. I'm talking 60, 70 people. And they grew this customer service team with Shopify platform. Mm. I don't have access to resources for 60 or 70 people um, and it's really important that uh, I try to stay low overhead. And because I'm low overhead, uh, you know, I'm, my resources are limited. So Amazon was the best platform for me as far as starting out and essentially working from the bottom by myself with my own resources. That's very interesting, man. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that point of customer service because that's one of the perks of FBA, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, just, just one more thing on that. Like, I, I really like FBA because it's, it's fairly point and shoot. Like there is so many resources, including the Amazon forum on how you can learn things, but BJK kind of laid the groundwork for what's really possible and more of a, it was an already pre-established groove on how to do this. Right. And that helped a bunch. That's awesome. So, I mean, you still have a full-time job, right? No, I, I don't work right now. Oh, you don't all. work? No, no. Um, I'm a full-time musician. Um, I stopped doing, I stopped working in February of this year. Okay. And it was really important for me to focus on my music. Okay. So I figured I'm going to launch this FBA program, uh, focus on my business, be an entrepreneur, and at the same time, invest in my business. Okay. So, and excuse me, I'm going to, there's some dogs in here. I'm going to go and uh, go to my room real quick. No worries. But, uh, you know, like I don't own properly. I live fairly simply, um, you know. Uh, here we go. Is that better? Um, yeah, so I'm a full-time musician and it's really important for me to focus on my music. And if I can't focus on my music, my life just feels like it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, so FBA has given me the time to do that and it's completely changed my life. Um, I, uh, I was doing product development for an electric bike company in Phoenix and did it for like two years and I loved it, but I went to work every day. And I also just saw my bosses, people who have used e-commerce to the nth degree and been completely successful. Uh, I just noticed that they weren't ever there. They were doing their own thing. Um, I was like, why can't I do that? Uh -huh. And Amazon was the tool that allowed me to do that, not Shopify. Um, and again, with way less resources. So um, now I'm doing what I want to do. I'm wrenching on bikes, uh, which is a passion of mine, bicycles, um, playing music all the time and working on my business. And it feels like I have uh, just another level of autonomy that I've never had before. Um, and I like that. <laughs> That's awesome. And now before we started recording, you said that you hit a milestone today or? The, the yeah, yeah, I did. I hit a milestone today. I hit uh, 35,000 in sales. That's awesome. So again, that's revenue. That's not profit, but um, it's just cash flow, and that's really special. Uh, I've never done that before, and it's cool. Like there will be a random Tuesday. I'm like, I just made six hundred fifty. I just made six hundred fifty dollars. Like right. it's real incredible to just look at that and be like, well, 
why why didn't I do this sooner? Yeah, uh, it's really cool. That's and awesome. it, it is overwhelming um, all the time. And I'm constantly learning things and getting confused and then having to try to figure it out and uh, mm -hmm. also be patient, kind of realizing that the Amazon process, like it's a really a day by day thing and you're building brick by brick, but it's sustained. That's awesome. So, yeah. Cool, man. Well, let me ask you a question. Um, how many, so obviously you, you're a musician and then uh, you're an Amazon seller full time. How many hours are you currently putting in uh, per day or per week on your Amazon business? Mm, I'm a little bit more aggressive with my, with how much time I put in because um, I have more time. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, five hours a day. Okay. You know, and, and that means like, I'm also looking for business insurance right now. Um, I'm also looking how to optimize my tax strategy with the business. So I'm also looking at optimizing my ads every day, my PPC campaigns, um, and also looking at constantly trying to, hey, what's another product that would work in this right. industry that I'm in? Um, I'm trying to stay in a niche industry and uh, my niche is the bicycle industry. So everybody rides bikes and whether it's the pandemic or not, uh, pedaling is a real amazing way to uh, get to where you wanna go. So I've been a huge, very passionate about bikes and I, I chose a passion project product and it's not necessarily what you recommended, but it's what I felt and I saw in the industry, just uh, this niche and why not take advantage of it, what I know. Okay. Um, how how important is it to how important is it to find the right product oh it's critical um i i knew i had the right product when uh i saw two years ahead and i was able to understand the volume of what I, of, my, of my product and how that is essentially how that was going to affect five or six major manufacturers. And I was gonna be one of the beneficiaries of essentially of, of investing in this product. Okay. And, and what is the, so far, um, what is the biggest struggle that you have had to face? Uh, biggest struggle, sure. Um, this is going to sound cliche, but just showing up, there's a lot to do, um, you know, like between the webinars, asking questions. Um, it's a very, you, you do need an active mind to do this. And gosh, you know, getting on my ex exercise routine again, it's really helped. It makes me think clearer. And so being able to like have somewhat of a routine now that I have all this time, um, you know, establishing a routine so I can really optimize my time. I feel like that's been the biggest challenge for me. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what about the business itself? Are there any specific parts of the business that you've, you've had more challenges with than others? Sure. Um, you know, just really getting the PPC campaign just dialed and okay. it's a, it's a constant, you know, I don't want to say slog, but it's, you know, you, it, it needs constant attention and that's okay. And by it, constant attention i mean you know once every four days you know really getting to see how this evolves and how you can make it better um and how how that is affecting your overall bottom line sure okay i, I would say that's that's probably the biggest uh challenge i've faced okay where, where do you see yourself uh with this amazon business in 12 or even 24 months what kind oh, of, you um, know, how many products do you think you're going to have? How much monthly revenue do you think you're, you'll uh, be making? Uh, 12 months. Um, so right now I'm doing roughly 8,000 a month. Okay. Um, you know. Gosh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, over $100,000. Over a hundred thousand. Okay. And what do you feel like is going to be the struggle to get there? What is the biggest thing that might be oh, the bottleneck? Um, right now it's finding, um, finding people to essentially work for me. 
Okay. So yeah, I, I, I need like one, I need one person to help me. And um, yeah, I think uh, if I had that one person, it would be, you know, it would be game changing. And is that financial or is that like other stuff? Oh, it's, a, it's like a physical body. Like I need somebody to do something. Got it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like having like a, maybe a VA to do certain things for you? Uh, no, like physical in-person touch. Oh, in-person. Okay. Got it. All right. Got need it. Somebody to, uh, you know, touch this you product. And... Element and stuff like that for your product. Okay. Got it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, do you think it'll, um, you're going to um, keep uh, growing within the same niche or do you f- see yourself going into other uh, niches and different categories? No, I think this is a really good place to be. Um, where I'm at right now. Um, but I would like to, yeah, I would like to branch. And I was thinking about like a clothing brand and I like clothing because the weight for shipping is mm. really light. Mm. Uh, number one, um, it typically doesn't take up a lot of packing space and um, you can charge a premium for some of these products um, in, in the, uh, I don't know, apparel. Okay. So just looking at certain niche, I've been looking at tie-dye like there's a huge niche for tie dye right now. I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe getting into clothing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you see, well, let me see. This is very interesting that you're saying that. So obviously, you had a product in your mind before starting out with us, um, mm-hmm. and then you, and then, but then you, although you said that the the program suggested a little bit against it, you still were able to apply the listing and launching strategy to your product, and then now. You're thinking of going to apparel and clothing. So you still think that the same strategy and the same things that you've learned in BJK University can apply there? I mean, absolutely. Yeah, Okay. for sure. It, it's just, it, I think you got to find, again, it is, it really does come down to the niche. It comes down to a very specific type, whatever anybody's looking for. And people are looking for millions and millions of things each day that are all different. Um, yeah, I think if you find something cool, you find something that you would actually use. Right. I think you would find something, um, if, if you can find a product that is, uh, makes you happy in that weird way, whatever that is, uh, then I think you found a good product that you can stand behind and people will also you know, trust it over time if you really develop this brand in the way that I'm developing my brand. Interesting. You know, just constantly, uh, a little bit each day. So do you think what you've learned is more of a skill that could be applied to anywhere, really, than uh, the skill? strategy? Uh, you know, that's a good question. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. What do you think? I'm a big believer than it is. And the only reason why I say that is because we're, so we're looking into selling on Walmart right now, right? And branching out there. Yeah. And we're learning the platform, but everything we know in Amazon, we're simply applying in Walmart and it seems to be working so far. Sure. You know? Sure. Yeah. Um, So that's why I asked. It's because I've had people say yes. I've had people say no, but you know, it's just kind of like, however you look at it. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. I wouldn't say it's a skill. I would say it's a strategy. Um, And it's, but it's like something you can do and replicate. Right. You know, I think a scale gets better where like a strategy is something that like is just consistently works. Got like, it. oh, cool. I can just apply this and it'll work. Got so, it. Yeah. Skill is like me playing guitar. It's taken me a long, long time to uh, become proficient in playing guitar. Um, only now do I feel like proficient. <laughs> Why don't you tell me a little bit more about that, man? How did you get into yeah. playing guitar? Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's so funny. In sixth grade, this kid came up to me. And I was just playing this old guitar and he's like, Hey, if you, if you can't play that, don't play at all. Oh, and I got so angry. I got so pissed. And the very next day I went out and got guitar lessons. <laughs> and then, um, yeah. And I mean, I was trying to do some pretty advanced stuff early on. I was trying to like learn a whole bunch of surf music and, you know, some really uh, Dick Dale type of stuff. And, uh, next time he saw me, I could play one of these songs and he was just like, Whoa, and I guess, I don't know. I just fell in love with making music. It's just, there's not a lot of things that make sense to me in life, but music and bicycles uh, are both it. <laughs> What's your goal with your music? Uh, you know, music yeah. 
Um, yeah, I want to put out an album. So I actually wow. have a schedule on Sunday. I'm meeting with my friend Dave and he's going to help me record a album. Wow. Um, so, and it's so cool. Like I have the time to do that now and it's so awesome. <laughs> I, I have the, I have the income to, you know, make it happen. Wow. That's great. So you, you, you obviously, you have a passion and then now you're able to actually do something about it because you have this business that is running that you don't have to be there day in, day out. Um, and it allows you the time to do the thing that you, you love doing, huh? Well, for sure. But also I, I always come back to that piece of Instagram content you did. It was like, you know, average millionaire has seven streams of income. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, shoot, you know, if I just get this on, uh, Spotify, maybe I can get some royalty income, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, and, and I, I see what you're doing with the, the university and like your personal self and you trying to like get this goal of how much value can you really provide? And that has a price tag and, you know, each person, you know, they're paying a, a modest sum, but like if they can produce this amount of money with your knowledge, um, that's serious value. Absolutely. And I think the same thing with like just getting my uh, getting different revenue streams going, whether it's through my music or through my Amazon or uh, or, you know, building and repairing bikes, which is a passion of mine um, or making videos about all of this. Um, yeah. yeah, like th these are all just different revenue streams that I think is like super exciting and um, and empowering. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. That's super cool. Hopefully that made sense. No, absolutely. But, but the, the, the thing that even has allowed you to have this kind of awareness is having the time to even be thinking about all this stuff, right? But, but even more than that, like really being intentional on writing every day, mm. you know, hey, where are you at? Like, okay, well, I'm feeling a little down. Shoot, you didn't go to the gym today. Maybe that's correlated. Just, and I feel like when I write things down, um, I can just become more organized, whether it's in my business or in my music uh, or in anything I do in life. It's 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 kind of critical to the process, I think. So whether writing it's a journal yeah. or carrying around like a little notebook. Um, I think it's been pretty, pretty crucial for me in my development. OK, um, so you started selling on Amazon not too long ago. Um, do you think someone can start today and still able to make it on Amazon? I hope you start today. Yeah, no, I think uh, right now is kind of the best time to get into it. Uh, if you well, have yeah. access to, uh, if you have access to a cell phone, if you have access to an internet connection, um, you can, I, I don't want to say you're done, but like you can do it that way. It's going to be hard, but like it, the barrier to entry has, is an, at an all time low. Like anybody could do this. It does require work. Um, you know, I went to, I got my master's in 2019 and, you know, I haven't used it at all. I've learned more through this program that's useful than my entire master's process. Wow. So like. How much was that? that the amount, so I paid, I paid $55,000 for my education. I paid $3,000 for BJK. And like what I learned with BJK was to create revenue. What I learned with my master's is how to be an employee. Um, I'll buy, you know, how to use Excel, how to like essentially be a great government employee. But that's not what I want. Um, I'm too creative. I'm too... Uh, I've got too much going on to want to do that. So BJK has allowed me to essentially start today and then actually do something for not a lot of money. That's awesome, man. That's super cool. Um, you seem like an intelligent guy and you pretty much had like the product. We obviously did not teach you how, well, we teach how to find a product, but you found a pro like you came to us with a product, yes. right? Yes. So the question is, why did you even come to us? Why? I mean, you had a product. You're an intelligent yeah. guy. You know, why yeah, I had I, I had the product, um, but there were still so many unanswered questions about the direction, and you know, I, I essentially 
the, the nice part about BJK was you guys just gave me the permission to do it. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of us get stuck on this whole thought of, oh, I just need permission to essentially fuck up and make mistakes and learn. Um, and that's why we, that's why we go to school because, you know, it's this nice little experimental zone where you can do that. Um, interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. Why BJK University? I mean, I'm pretty sure you've probably seen. Like, yeah. You know, I looked at somebody like building out a Amazon store for me for $30,000. I was like, okay, this, and I had $30,000 and I was like, Fuck, I don't want to do this. <laughs> this, uh, this sounds like a waste of money. I feel like if you're going to do this, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, if you're going to call yourself that if you're not going to work for somebody else. You need to do it. Right. And it's a hard conversation you have with yourself of, um, wow, it's a lot of time with the product, a lot of time figuring out how to move it, a lot of time figuring out um, what not to do. But again, having the forum on Facebook where I can just ask questions and within an hour I get a response is really beneficial. And I can't understate that. Uh, I can't overstate that enough, rather. Got it. That's awesome, man. What is the, um, the, the biggest thing that you value at BJK University? Um, I mean, Bashar, you're great. But Amar is freaking amazing. He is so great. Uh, his, his passion for helping people, his patience um, just on the calls, it's, it's legendary. Um, th- there's that. But I think there's also just, um, you know, like what we're doing right now, you're just checking in on me. I, I, feel, uh, I feel special in, in this group, rather. Uh, and, and I feel like you kind of need that. If you want to be part of something and you really want to believe in yourself, um, you know, I'm not a religious man, but I do believe there's this weird little uh, component of our brain that like, you know, if we're believed in by other people, uh, it triggers something. And I like BJK for that. I feel believed in. That's awesome. That's super mm-hmm. cool, man. Um, what is the number one advice that you would give uh, to somebody starting out this journey, whether it with BJK University or, or with um, Yeah. I would say, you know, write down on one piece of paper where you're at and, you know, understand that you'd need, you know, three to six grand and figure out how you're going to get that money and Mm -hmm. then blast off. And I would say, give yourself a timeline, give yourself an under a month to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, Like make it your, your priority. If you, if you're serious about it, if you're not like, that's cool too. We all are living our own lives. Uh, we got problems and medical bills and, you know, people get hurt and you got to go here, you know, like life gets in the way, but I would also say that that's an excuse. Like if you really want it, you will make it happen. Right. Um, and, and the same goes, you know, the other way, you know, if you don't want it, it won't happen. <laughs> right. And it's the same power. Yeah. Wow. That's super awesome, man. Well, Sam, um, I really appreciate your time, man. This is uh, super valuable, especially for people starting out right now. It's because, uh, you know, they get to see, it's one thing when it comes from like me and us, the team, right? And it's a different thing when it comes from someone that's actually gone through the journey. Um, And the fact that, okay, so because we have different students, one people, you know, one person that came through the entire thing and, and we helped them find a product for you where you have your own product or you had your own product came in and kind of uh, went through the process that way. So it's really important for people to see out there. Um, so I really do appreciate you sharing your journey and sharing your, your knowledge with everybody, man. I mean, I know for sure for me, I don't think <clears throat> I do a lot of writing and I know after this interview, I'm going to do a lot more writing and, and really, I, it's kind of, for me, it's like it goes and comes in waves, you know? Sure. Um, inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, do you know who James Clear is? I don't. Okay. He, he has a really interesting theory. You just said he comes in waves, right? Inspiration, motivation, right? Um, he has a really good theory. And I use this for music too. Mm-hmm. So motivation comes and goes, but a schedule remains. So what he does is he has a, I think like a blog on like Tuesday and Thursday or something like, and whatever happens, those always come out. 
Right. Um, so he, he always writes on those days. And then, but e even though it may be junk, he always writes on those days. So he doesn't make this um, kind of, uh, I don't know, exclusion in his mind of, oh, just because it's junk, I'm not going to do it. He always is going to do it. So being consistent with it is, I think, probably been my, my best way to develop, not only as a musician, but like as a writer or as an entrepreneur. Just remain, just be consistent. Always get your work out or always get your writing in. Um, yeah, I think like having that routine is like, it's a game changer. And that's, what, and that's what I'm working on right now. So like, I, I think if any, if everyone can do that, uh, man, we are going to take over the world. That's awesome. That's super. <laughs> well, Sam, thank you very much for your time, man. Truly yeah. appreciate this. Uh, super inspiring. I know for sure I've got a few things here that I need to work on myself. And uh, those of you watching, hope uh, that you guys, uh, if, if and when you do enroll in BJK University, be sure to hit up Sam. He'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Uh, so outside of that, until next time, thank you. Thanks, Bashar.